Would you like to see something that no one has ever seen before? In the following demonstration, I'm going to show you how to recover tiny little microfossils that may be hundreds of millions of years old from a common piece of shale like this. Before you begin processing a shale, there are certain pieces of equipment that you will need, such as a supply of kerosene, a plastic funnel to uh, funnel the kerosene back into the, the bottle, um, a couple of beakers, a spray bottle or squirt bottle for water, a coffee can, and a couple of coffee can lids. One lid will be intact, the other one will have a couple of holes punched in it. Two sieves, a number 20 sieve and a 120 sieve, some paper towels, sample envelopes, masking tape, pen or pencil, and some powder detergent. Another item that you will need is a processing sheet. This processing sheet should include information such as sample number, the original weight of the sample, the amount of sample that you've processed, and the date that the sample was processed. In addition to that, you can have a remarks section where you can include things such as the name of the person who did the processing, any problems that you encountered while you were doing the, the washing of the samples, or anything else that, that seems noteworthy. When you have these materials together, the sample that you've brought back from the field will tend to be wet, and you'll have to dry it out before you can continue on with the processing. Before you transfer the sample to the can, take a piece of masking tape and place it on the can. On this piece of masking tape, write the sample number and your name. Transfer about 500 grams or two and a half cups of sample into the coffee can. The coffee can is then put in an oven at about 135 degrees centigrade or about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have an oven available, you can also air dry the sample or dry it with the help of things like a heat lamp or a fan. The sample should be very dry though before going on with the next step and this will tend to be anywhere from a couple of hours if you're oven drying to overnight if you're, if you're drying it with a heat lamp or maybe even longer if it's air dried. After the, um, the sample has completely dried out Remove the can from the oven if you are using an oven to dry the sample and allow it to cool down. The reason that you want to do this is the next step will be to pour kerosene over the sample and it's not a good idea to pour the kerosene over a hot sample. Once you've allowed the sample to cool, pour just enough kerosene over the sample to, to cover the sample. Allow the sample then to sit in the kerosene for preferably two hours at least, and longer if at all possible. Overnight is a, a good length of time to leave the sample in the kerosene. This allows the kerosene to completely penetrate into the pores in the sample and will help in the breakdown in the following steps. Once you've covered the sample with the kerosene, place the intact coffee can lid over the coffee can. This serves a dual purpose. First of all, it prevents potentially hazardous and flammable fumes from escaping into the, the room. The other purpose is that it saves on the kerosene by preventing evaporation of the kerosene. To make the paper funnel, take your paper towel and fold it in half, then fold it in half again, and open it up into a funnel. This is then placed inside of the plastic funnel. Do you remember that coffee can lid with the two holes punched in it? Well, here's where it comes into play. When you're pouring the kerosene, make sure that the edge of the can is over the funnel so that none of the kerosene drips out onto the countertop. The holes in the coffee can lid keep the sample from pouring out, but allow you to pour the kerosene out without making a big mess. Try to avoid pouring any of the sample into the paper funnel. Now take your sample and add just enough water, preferably hot water, to cover the sample. The reaction between the water and the kerosene will cause the shale to spall apart. If you look closely, you can see that the shale is breaking down from, a, from the rather, rather rigid pieces 
that we started with to rather fine particles, which will eventually become a fine mud, which can be washed through the, the sieves. You'll need two sieves for the washing process, a number 20 and a number 120 sieve. The number 20 sieve is the coarser sieve, and that sieve will catch the, the larger fragments, but will generally not have any microfossils in it. The 120 sieve is the finer sieve, and will catch most of the, the microfossils, but will let most of the clays pass through, which will then be washed down the drain. Another piece of equipment that is handy to have is just a wooden block to prop up one end of the sieves while you're washing. This prevents air from building up or being trapped underneath the sieves. During the washing process, you'll probably find that your lower sieve will clog up perhaps a couple of times during the processing. The way that you tell this is that water will start ponding up in the upper sieve and will start leaking out between the, the lower sieve and the upper sieve. To alleviate the problem, remove the upper sieve and set it to the side. Force a jet of water in a small circular area in the downslope or lower portion of the, the fine sieve. This will allow the water that has ponded up in the lower sieve to drain out. After most of the water has drained out, wash the residue back and forth across the, the sieve a couple of times to remove as much of the, the clay as you can um, before proceeding on with the, the washing. After you've washed the sample back and forth across the sieve a couple of times, replace the upper sieve and continue washing the, the coarser fraction through. You may find that ponding occurs several times and you'll have to repeat the, the preceding um, procedure. Continue washing the, the upper sieve until there is virtually no clay left in the upper sieve. You'll be able to tell that by looking at the, uh, the shape of the, the grains. We're getting pretty close to completing the washing of the top sieve. You can see some, some uh, grains here. These two pieces are pyrite that will not wash through the sieves. The other more rounded grains that are still on the surface are clays, and those will wash through. Pretty soon we'll have those washed through and we'll be able to move on to the washing of the fine sieve. Continue washing the upper sieve until all of the clay has passed through to the lower sieve. The residue in the upper sieve is then recoverable, if you wish, and may include um, small fossils, probably no microfossils, but may have small fossils in that you'd be interested in. And you can recover this fraction by running a, a slow stream of water through the back of the sieve to wash the, the residue down to a pile on one end of the, the sieve. This sample is pretty well washed up now, and we can, if we want to save this fraction, because the, the material is fairly coarse, wash it from the, from the back down to one end of the, of the sieve. And now it's ready to wash into our, our filter paper for drying. Take a paper towel and label it with your sample number and the sample size and your name and put that in the upper right hand corner of the paper towel. Turn the paper towel over and put the same information in the, the middle of the paper towel on the right hand side and flip the paper towel over again and we will now transfer the, the sample to the paper towel. At this point, the coarse residue is ready to be transferred to the filter paper. This is done by washing it out of the sieve with a water bottle, squeeze water bottle. When the residue has been washed into the filter paper, the paper is folded in thirds and then folded again. And then it's folded in thirds this way, and again, so that the label is on the outside of the paper. It is then placed in the oven or on a drying rack to dry. Now we're ready to, fi to wash the, the fine fraction. The first thing to do is to sprinkle a small amount of powdered detergent on the sieve. This will help to 
break up the kerosene and allow the water to pass through the sieve. It also helps to tell you when the sample is ready. About the same time that the detergent has washed through the sieve, the um, sample will be ready for, for drying. Wash the sample back and forth across the sieve until as much as the, the clay is washed through as possible. You may have to wash the sample back and forth as many as 15 or 20 times to completely wash the clays through the sieve. When the detergent and most of the clays have washed through the fine sieve, it's time to recover the, the sample. This is done by washing the sample down to one end of the sieve. The next step is to wash the residue into a beaker. The reason for doing this is that there are probably some organic materials such as mosses, lichens, algae or twigs or roots, root particles. And we want to remove those from the residue in the microfossils. To do this, add a little bit of water to cover the sample and then swirl the sample. Let the sample sit for a couple of seconds and the minerals and microfossils will move to a pile in the center of the beaker. The lighter materials, the lighter organic materials will move towards the outer edge and can be poured off and discarded. The residue bearing the microfossils is then ready to be transferred to the filter paper for drying. It is washed out of the beaker, again with the squeeze bottle of water, into the center of the filter paper, which is then folded in the same way as we did for the, the coarser number 20 fraction. Again, place the paper towel in the oven or on a drying rack to dry. After the washing has been completed, it's important to clean both the sieves and the coffee can in which the processing was done to prevent microfossils from one sample getting into another sample. To wash the sieves, take a forced jet of water and wash it from the top of the sieve down to the bottom on one side. Turn the sieve around and rinse out the inside of the sieve and then force a jet of water through the other side. This process can be repeated several times for each of the sieves until you feel certain that all of the microfossils have been washed out of the sieves. Be careful not to touch the, the lower sieve or the fine sieve with the tubing as this can damage the sieve and the lower sieve in particular is very expensive. The upper sieve is somewhat more sturdy but still touching the upper sieve should be avoided when possible. The coffee can can be washed out again with a forced, forced stream of water. You may also want to use a fine brush, such as a, a small scrub brush, to clean any remaining materials out of the fine seams in the coffee can. When the sample is dried, it's ready to be transferred from the oven into a sample envelope. The information that was recorded on the filter paper is transferred to the envelope. The filter paper is opened up and the residue is poured into the envelope. The envelope can then be stored until it's ready for picking. The techniques just demonstrated to go from this stage to this stage are used here daily in the micropaleontological processing laboratories here in the geology department at the University of Iowa. These techniques can also be used by your students in your classrooms.